Claris TV speaking to champ, former Champions City captain and uh, manager Dean Wells and Chris Symes ahead of the game today. Your reunion for the 88-89 season. What's your your favourite memories from that from that uh, from that double winning season, Dean? Um, I would say that uh, we there was a number of games, but I would say probably sticks in our mind would have been Rice Slip away when we won 9-0 and, our, and the other game that sticks for me is Gravesend at home um, Easter time Chris yeah. Easter we won because they were behind us and we won 3-0 at home and we had I think it was about 2018 they queued round the block to get yeah big queue um, so that was probably the, the game for me yeah and I scored <laughs> And what was your position and your sort of left? Well, Simon, you played me at left wing in those days, old-fashioned left winger. Yeah. And uh, Chris, you were the manager. You got relegated the season before on the last day, I think. But you know, to get to get promoted straight back up again in, in the way we did must have been really fulfilling for you. Yeah, we got relegated. I'd only joined a month before, and uh, we were struggling. And it only came to the last game when we got relegated. Colby, wasn't it? Yeah, and I remember me and the uh, centre forward, Grand Powell, stood outside the social club at the end of season two with a pint each, and everybody else was moaning. And uh, six months later, the, 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 uh, the board decided to keep me on, and um, I knew that uh, jumps would be a lot of supporters. If I didn't do the business, I would be toast. So I went out and I signed Alan Brazil, I uh, courted Paul Mariner, Paul Price, all sorts of ex-professionals. Some of them came, some of them didn't. And um, I kept two players from the previous team, which was Dean and uh, Paul Marlowe, and um, recruited players from everywhere. Um, from Norfolk and Kent and, and, and uh, all sorts of places. Put together a side that just clicked. We played 4-4-2 and um, we just outscored everybody. 104 goals at D. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We just, we just weren't, yeah. afraid, we weren't afraid of anybody. And because we were favourites for the league, because we'd come down, I think that helped us because teams sat back against us and we just sat over, you know, overrun them. But to say Alan Brazil, he, he only lasted till October because he got an offer to go to Sweden. But uh, in fact, at the end of the year, we had a. I took everybody to a hotel to a, um, a party, and we were in the sauna. Mm. And all the players had left the sauna, and I was in there. And there was two other businessmen in there, and I heard one. And the other said to the other, "Is that Chelsea said?" He said, "Yeah." He said, uh, um, "When Alan Brazil left in October, I wouldn't have given him a, a, a chance of winning the league." And that made me really chuffed mm. to say that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we spoke to Paul and, and Phil. They said yeah. the camaraderie of the team was sort of the the, the secret. To the success I, that season, I, I think so because they're you know individually we we was we had good players, but collectively we had this no one could beat us attitude, and um, I think this is proved today because obviously I've probably got we got eleven of them back today. There's only Louis Newman can't make it; he's been called back to work. But other than that, everyone's here, and this just goes to show thirty five years down the line that you can drop a text or a phone call and they'll come, which just goes to show how much they thought one of our team and this guy here as well and also the football club and what was uh, what was playing at New Real Street like and managing at New Real Street like well it was great um, the pitch was a bit of a mucky but we didn't we didn't worry about that I mean I go through the team we had Paul Casey who came be player of the year um, he played every game in goal and double centre half we had Gary Nash who was the best centre half in non-league I've ever seen and uh Tony Hadley, he was playing for Whitsum and I asked, I watched him play at Lair Road for, for South End a few months before. I thought, cool, he's a good player if he ever gets released. And he got released and I phoned up Whitsum and said, can I have Tony Hadley? He owes us £20 for a dance ticket. So I paid £20 for Tony Hadley and he was absolutely outstanding at the back. And the two full-backs, as I say, were, 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 were Steve Hubbard and, 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 and um, Marlowe. And it, we just went through Mitchell Spring, it was sort of the star of the show, he scored all the goals. But then when Alan Brazil left, I went out and spent the money he was getting on five forwards. I got... Um, uh, uh, 
Louis Newman. Louis Dave Newman. McCoy. Louis Newman from Felixstowe. Yeah. I got Dave McCoy from Sudbury. I got um, Alec Gallagher from Tipsy. Lance Padler from Wembley. They'd all played well against us, and they all made their debut down and at Kev Miller. And Kevin Miller Kevin from, Miller. from, from, from Tunbridge. That's right. And um, they just clicked. And as I say, the camaraderie, I've got a, a DVD somewhere. In fact, I brought it with me, actually, if you, if you want to take it off. And it's a dressing room at half time, and it's absolutely hilarious. Yeah. And you won the Essex Senior Cup that season as well. So yeah, that was the icing on the cake as well, because obviously, um, like to us, that's the league and the cup double for us yeah. back in the, you know, all right, the trophy's a big trophy, but for us, the Essex Senior Cup still in them days was huge. And we did go there slightly probably underdogs, because Graves were a big team at the time. And um, yeah, that that tipped it all. I think we, we you know we won that three two. Phil's probably told you about his goal. I yeah. think yeah, I would say Phil's told you about his goal. Um, but no, that was great. That was a great end to the season. Um, and you know, it's just a shame that we couldn't continue it the following year. You know, it things happened and we just it, the team sort of just slowly drifted away. Yeah, and I don't know if you know, but uh, we're on a. We could break one of your records, by yeah, the way. We've uh, won 13 away games this season in the league, and, and you won 13, so we've equaled it. But we've got one away game left to try and break the record at Chippenham on the last day. So, I suppose, what does that? You know, this is, it's a good record, 13 away wins. Yeah, that's great. You know, I'm, 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 I watched the way that the, the, the club has expanded and, yeah, and, right. and, and, and done well. I mean, I hear rumours about the, the conference that might not allow you. You might have to share a brain tree. Is that right? <laughs> my old club and the, the I hope not <laughs> no, yeah, that's we hope not. no we hope not yeah. but the thing about this is I won a lot more at Braintree but they've never let me have a reunion <laughs> In fact, uh, Mitchell Spring walked in the gate to watch Brangie play Yeovil last week, and he said, uh, the guy in the gate said, you're Mitchell Spring. He said, yeah, he said, 180 goals, 1983. He said, well, that'd be 15 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> I think what it is with this, with the, Ben, with this this group, is we were we were only together for one year. You might speak to a lot of clubs, every unions, the, the players are there year after, we've got a few year after year, like Paul Marlowe, but the majority of them were there for that season. And that season, we probably had a core group of 15 players. In them days, it used to be two subs, and that was it. Yeah. And that's it. That's all we had. And unfortunately, we couldn't get a couple of the players back today. But the players you see today at the game is is our squad. There wasn't. There's none. You know. There's none really. All right. Alan Brazil. We worked hard to get. We could not get him. Um, but you know, we tried. But. I think it's just the way everybody knitted and gelled and as, as Chris said, we didn't, all right, Mitchell scored a lot of our goals, but we didn't have named players, do you know what I mean? We just stuck together, Chris put the same team out virtually every game and we became unbeatable, basically. Yeah, and uh, let's hope, I suppose, this current squad can have a reunion in about 30 years' time and oh. celebrating a promotion this season. You say that, when we were playing in 89, they brought about the old old guys that won the championship yeah, in 63 right. or whatever it was. That's right. And, and now here we are in the same Yeah, that's same right. Boat, but that's there's right. two people that should be mentioned that we haven't mentioned. It's Don Walker and Don that's, Stewart, yeah, both definitely. passed away. Definitely. Both wonderful. Yeah. I remember Don Walker came out to me on the pitch and a training session when we had lost to Hal Owen on a Saturday in the FA Cup and he said can you come with me I said why he said just come with me into the physio's room and he put a beer glass against the wall to the director's room and they were planning on sacking me they were in a vote because oh, we lost to Hal Owen and um, so I went into the director's and they had two piles of pay packets and I said what's going on they said well this pile tried on Saturday and this pile didn't and it took me an hour to get the wages for the boys that was what it was like and yeah. in, the, in the end we went to the Premier Division and they gave me no budget at all and I struggled to get players in and then um, I got George Bork from um, Dagenham or somewhere because he he, he was struggling for, for a job and he brought two or three players with him and I signed him on the Friday and on the Monday he had my job. He had no job, Chris. He went around the director's houses and, and had my job by the Monday and he did the same to Graham Roberts who was manager of Enfield, the former Tottenham legend. Yeah, yeah. He signed him on the Tuesday, and he had him sacked by the Friday, George Borg. But as I say, that season we, we, I, I wouldn't. That's I've played for a number of clubs. Chris has managed a number of clubs, but I'm going to say that this is probably the best experience. Club fans, 
a family, the playing side of it that I've probably ever played in. And I'm not just saying that because I'm on that camera. I'm just being totally honest that that's, well, that shows for today what we got back today. Well, two mentions of Tony Hadley, for instance, when Mitchell scored the goal against Gravesend in front of 2,500 here. Tony Hadley, he very rarely crossed the halfway line. Mm. He ran from his goal to the other goal to jump on him and everybody yeah, else did. Yeah, um, and then after the game, we won the league. And when we won the league, Tony Hadley's on the physio's bench pitting massage by Don Walker and all the rest of them are shrieking in the other room and Tony Hadley said to me, listen to them, he said, they'll never do this again in their lives. And we must have get Doug Fawcett as well. And Doug, Doug, Doug passed Fawcett away. Was our chairman yeah, Doug, the Doug, Doug appointed me. He used to go to watch Braintree as well. And he saw we were doing well at Braintree. And in fact, I was interviewed for the Chelmsford job years before when the chap, was it Leavers, went to mm, Cambridge? Mm. He, he, he got the job. Um, and then, when I, I, as I say, I, the next time I was doing well at Braintree, Doug Fawcett, he sort of headhunted me. And that was, you know, that was it. But uh, it was a heck of a job getting the team together. And so I've put, I've, I've got a book and I've put in it that Peter Coffin and I had the fortune of coaching a team with guys from far afield as Lowestoft, Kent, mm. Wembley. Um, mm. We pulled them in from everywhere. Yeah. And because Chelsea's got a big name, they've got yeah. big support and they've got a good name. I mean, Louis Newman, um, who's out there, he's, he's, he's not, not there, today, no, no. Not Louis Newman scored umpteen goals. Um, he left Felix Stowe and Felix Stowe very upset and he, he, he said I just couldn't turn it down. Chelmsford was a step up for me. Everybody knows Chelmsford. You know? It's a huge club, Chelmsford. Yeah. It's a massive club, you know. New Riddle Street. Did you go to New Riddle Street? Yeah, a couple of times. I mean, yeah. New Riddle Street was, uh, no disrespect to this place, that was, a football, that was a football ground, you know. Big old stand. When we played, we probably had 1,000, 1,200 every home game. Once we started to win, because we did have a dodgy start, yeah. uh, but once we started to win, we had 1,000. They used to come from the cricket over and stuff like that. It was great. It was great. And then, you know, I don't think, as I say, the ground made the team, but the team was also exceptional. OK, thanks for your time, no Dean and Chris, and uh, enjoy the day this, Thank you this afternoon. Much. Thank you. Hope they win. Hopefully.